Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis Lewis Speaks 2024. And, you know, I just feel like my generation is extremely whack. You know, this generation is terrible about showing love and showing investment in other people. It's like with family and friends, you feel so expendable, you feel unimportant, you feel invisible, and nobody really knows how to pour into anyone anymore. People just don't have the capacity. It's like friends these days, they just are so lackluster. They're so hands off. Relationships, you know, when you're getting to know somebody, everybody is just so hands off. Nobody wants to do the work on investing in anyone anymore. And it's just like, I feel like I'm almost panhandling for attention, for support, for love. You feel like you're asking people, make me feel like someone. Make me feel like I matter to you. All I want to do is matter to you. And you keep on trying to impose your life, it feels, on their life. It feels as though you're trying to always just force yourself on people these days. And it's just to the point where I don't force myself on nobody. What I do is I just tune into their energy and how they're making me feel. And based on that reading, I basically just, if you're good, I hold on to you. I hold you and I regard you with, with, with just loyalty. But if you treat me like I'm not anyone or like I don't matter to you and that you could take me or leave me, I'm done with you. I'm done with you even before I started up with you. And I'm just so tired of people treating me like I don't matter. Like I don't matter. You know, sometimes you just feel like you don't matter to anybody. You know, you get into relationships, you get into friendships because you're hoping that these relationships not only will provide you with an opportunity to show love, but also with an opportunity to receive love. You know, these are supposed to be ships. What does a ship do? A ship carries you from one place to the next. Where are your relationships, your friendships taking you? Besides through changes, all the relationships and friendships that I'm dealing with right now, it just feels as though people are just so, just, ugh, meh, meh, blah. There's not even a freaking word to describe these people. They're just so like, they just leave a bad taste in your mouth because you know that they could be more. You know that they could really just fly if people would just invest. And you just get tired of telling people how to do the basic, how to do the bare minimum. It's like you have to hold up a cue card and tell your friends and your family, read from this. I care about you. I love you. So it's kind of like you're just loving on yourself. And my thing is this. I know I'm someone. I know I am someone great. I know that I am a wonderful person. It's not low self-esteem. But sometimes you want people to enhance that and reflect that back to you and uplift you. You know, this is why we get into relationships. But these days, when you ask for that, you're accused of being too needy. Oh, you're codependent. Oh, you're this. You're pathologized. Your genuine need for love and support is pathologized and made to feel as though you're asking for too much. I'm here to tell you right now in this video, if you require love and support, you are not asking for too much. We all need to be watered. We all need to be fed. We all need to be loved and given attention and nurturance. And when you don't get that, this is what you have out there. This is the world we live in. There's so many people going from pillow to post trying to find love and they're they're homeless and they're trying to find just 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 everything. They're trying to find community. They're trying to find support and they just don't have it. You know, there are a lot of people out there who are blessed with big families and big communities and adult villages and they have support systems and they have networks. And that's a blessing. I just feel like all my networks are freaking breaking down right now. I feel like Job. That's what I feel like. I feel like Job. When everything around him was just crashing down. Everything around him was just crashing down. And it feels like, is there anyone I could put my faith in right now? 
Is there anyone I could really just lean my love into and feel like I am heard, like I am valued, like I am seen? I got to think on that because uh, the way that I'm feeling right now, I just don't feel that support. I just don't feel that love. I just don't feel that sense of nurturance that I need in order to, to thrive. You know, it just feels as though when people see that you are a light or that you're strong, they feel as though you don't need support. So they just ignore you and they just keep on asking you to support them. And it's just like, you're like, no, no, I'm not going to sit up there and pour into somebody who's not pouring into me. I'm not going to keep doing that because that's how you deplete yourself. And that's what leaves you resentful. So my thing is this. If your friendships, your relationships are not pouring into you, you need to do a complete overhaul in terms of how you're showing up. Because I need to also examine how am I showing up? I got to take some responsibility here. How am I showing up in these relationships? Are you always showing up like you are together? Are you always showing up ready to offer support? Do you even know how to receive support? Many of us are so used to being strong that we have forgotten how to receive support. We have, we never learn how to receive support. And that's a trauma response too. If you grew up in a house that was chaotic, you always find yourself trying to be the equilibrium, trying to be the stabilizing force, trying to keep the family even, you will oftentimes struggle with receiving love because you're so used to adopting this role of being the stabilizing force, of being the one who keeps the homeostasis even, that you fail to actually allow yourself to be loved and you need it too. You need to let people pour into you. And so I'm learning that. At the same time, I'm also doing a clearing in terms of all the relationships in my life that are not serving me and that are not showing up, you know, that are not making me feel special, that are not making me feel valued, that are not making me feel seen. If you're not making me feel special and important and seen, I'm, I'm done with you. I'm just falling back. I'm falling completely back. Because I'm not, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for that. I can love myself alone. And I'm going to say that again. I can love myself alone. I don't need somebody coming in here trying to love me less. No. If you're not trying to love me equally or more than the way I love myself, you got to go. If you cannot match or exceed what I'm bringing to the table, then you got to go. It's like, once again, everybody's going because they're telling you in both so many words and that's the issue. We're always saying, you got to go. You got to go. And I'm saying that you got to go. But who's coming in? Everybody's going. They got to go, but who's coming in? That's the thing because nobody has the capacity. No one has the capacity to hold you. No one has the capacity to care. And so that's why I say I, I, I'm being led to God. Because when you've had the best, you can't settle for the rest. You cannot settle for less. And when you have God's love, his love is the best. Everything else is the rest. So I'm learning that in this wilderness experience right now, maybe I'm being called to do something different. Maybe I'm being called to have faith and build my faith in God because only he is the one who, who puts it in the hearts of other people to show up for you. He can motivate them, you know? These people on their own initiative, they are showing me that they cannot Hold me the way that I need to be held. And a lot of times you feel guilty for even saying that because you want to recognize the efforts and acknowledge the efforts of the people in your life who try to hold you. And you understand, thank you for trying, but it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. And then you ask yourself also, you feel guilty because you're asking yourself, maybe I need too much. Maybe I need too much and other people just don't have it to give. So then you got to check in with yourself. Am I requiring too much for my relationships? Are you requiring too much from your relationships? You know, I think for me, 
sometimes the bare minimum can be too much. Sometimes the bare minimum can be too much, especially in this day and age. The bare minimum is too much. People are overwhelmed. They're overtaxed. They're burdened with other feelings of grief, loss. They just don't have the energy to give. All they have is the capacity to receive. All they want is receive. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme give attention, gimme time, gimme money, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Everything's gimme. And I'm to the point where you know something, I need attention, I need love, I need support, I need validation, I need compliments, I need reassurance, I need consistency, I need consistency. Anybody out there who is consistent these days, nobody. Everybody is just so unpredictable, everybody is just so irregular, everybody just shows up when they wanna show up, do what they wanna do, oh please. I just say, and this is why I hibernate. This is why I basically just avoid people in general because I realize that I just, I don't need somebody who's going to show up incomplete. Don't show up in my life incomplete. Complete the sentence, complete the love, complete the feeling, complete the investment. Complete it. Don't come to deplete me. Don't come to offer an incomplete love. I don't need that. I need a complete love. But it's like asking that these days. Whoop, you, whoop. You're asking for too much now. You want too much now. Like I said, the bare minimum is even too much now in this generation. Now nobody even calls you. People throw you an easy text message, just a couple of words, three letters, H-R-U, W-Y-D, just everything is so hands off. No one wants to listen anymore. That's why they send you a text because half the times they don't want to really listen or they send an emoji and call that loving on you. And we know, as a generation, we have figured out through research, through reading, through experience, we figured out what we all need in order to be healthy, right? We know that we need love, investment, time. We all know that. And yet still, we don't give that. We give the bare minimum. And then we want to exact the maximum. We give crumbs, but yet we want the whole cake from other. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. I'm like precious is mom. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> really, I can't. I just mm-mm. because my thing is this: don't expect from me what you don't have to give. You know, do not expect from me what you are not willing to give. If you expect from me what you're not willing to give, you've already lost the game because you ain't getting jack, period. So my thing is this. If you have a friendship, if you have a relationship, please invest. Please show up. Please offer a complete love because so many friendships and relationships are breaking down right now because so many people are just expecting to be poured into they're expecting to be fangirled and fanboyed they want everybody to be a fan not a friend not a partner they want a disciple they want an acolyte they want somebody who's a follower they want somebody who's going to worship at the altar that is them and once again these delusions of grandeur do not serve a relationship These delusions of grandeur does not serve a relationship. If anything, it works to terminate the relationship. So if you want to end your relationship, constantly expect your partner to worship you. Because this generation talking about self-love, self-love, self-love. Hmm. Self-love is beautiful. But at what point does self-love become narcissism? At what point does self-love become this 
inordinate desire to be worshipped and adored? There's so many questions. It's about balance. For me, it's about balance. You know, it's okay to be adored. It's okay to be loved. But don't expect this, 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 this hero worship, this constant stream of praise to the point where just the smallest amount of constructive feedback just causes your defenses to deploy. You know? I've noticed that too. A lot of people in this day and age, they cannot handle constructive feedback. It's all good when you offer in that constant stream of praise, but the moment that you have to sit with someone and confront them about their poor behavior, that's when you start to notice them getting defensive. That's when you start to notice the ego and how sick it is. Because you can tell a sick ego because a sick ego is unable to tolerate confrontation and conflict. They can't tolerate carefrontation, someone bringing something up. That's when you know the ego is broken. But the thing about it is this. I am not here to manage somebody else's ego. I am here to offer the truth about who I am in my life. So my thing is this. I'll circle it back around. It's time that we start showing up, that we start showing up in our relationships, that we start showing up in our friendships, that we actually start showing up in real ways. I know as an adult, my adult friendships, they're starting to shift. I know that's part of life. That's part of adulting. As you get older, your priorities shift. You don't have as much time, you know? And I realized that I have shifted and I have changed. I went from frivolity, the frivolity of my youth, to the responsibility of my adulthood. Because adulthood is a responsibility. And so I think that this has shifted the dynamics of my friendships in a large way because we no longer have this the, the time that we once did. We no longer have free days. All of our days are either spent at work or trying to work on our dreams, trying to get our dreams off the ground. So a lot of us don't have free time. And so a lot of, a lot of meetings are scheduled. You know, we have appointments now with our friends as opposed to those moments of spontaneity where you could just, you know, hey, what are you doing? Let's go out here. No, we don't. And so there's a large shift. There's a large shift, but you've got to put in the work because as you get older, friendships take work. Relationships take work. People, if you think that you are going to be in an effortless relationship or friendship, that is a misconception. I'm here to tell you that they do take work. And so you have got to invest because if you do not invest, well, guess what? You will not have a friend. You will not have a relationship. You've got to do that personal work too. You got to do that work on yourself because you could be expecting too much from people. That could very well be the reason why you are unable to maintain friendships and relationships because you expect too much from people. Also, you expect too much from people who don't have the capacity to give you what you need. So step one is to assess, does this person even have the capacity before I'm calling them my friend? Do they even have the capacity to hold me in the way that I need to be held that makes me feel safe enough to show up for them? Because if you're always showing up for someone and they're not showing up for you, there's going to come a time when you don't feel safe to do that anymore. Because you realize that you're not being held with the same intensity, the same care, the same nurturance that you are holding them with. So that's the thing. You got to make sure you do your assessment. And that's why, you know, before when I was younger, all I looked for from friendships and relationships was availability. Were you single? You know, were you available to go here, there, 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 there? And that's the only thing that was my only requirement to be friends with somebody, to have a relationship with someone. Were you available? Now I'm looking for more. 
I'm not only looking for availability, but I'm also looking for compatibility. I'm also looking for responsibility. I'm also looking for the ability, the ability to tolerate discomfort, the ability to tolerate having those, those uncomfortable conversations. Can you hold space for my feelings? You know? Can you show up and offer encouragement during difficult times? Can you provide those acts of service? Do you have the capacity to hold my grief the same way you want me to hold space for yours? Can you hold space for mine? These are all the questions that you have to ask yourself because as we get deeper into the time of the end, you're going to need some roots. None of these leaves, none of these branches. Nah, you need some roots. You need some people in your life who are going to show up in a real way because we can't get by on just club scenes, on clubs and fun outings and hiking and fun trips. And no, 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 no. You need somebody who's going to be able to weather the storms with you who's going to go deep with you, who's going to go deep in the trenches and help lift you up because that's life. And if they don't have the capacity to do that, okay, you recognize that, that's fine. Then they're gonna go into a different category, associate. Because you need a couple of associates, but you also need some roots, solid friends. You need buddies, associates, and friends. Day ones. We use the acronym BAD. You know, if you want to be bad and bad as in dangerous and good, buddies, associates, and day ones. Definitely. And the thing about it, what's important is you have to maintain those relationships. Maintain them. Show up. This generation is just really, I think it's a silent generation. No one takes any initiative. Everybody's silent. They're waiting on everybody else to show them. Well, you have to show someone. Be the change you wish to see in the world. So I hope this video lands on your hearts and thank you so much for listening. I love you very much. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your comments. They are invaluable. I'll talk to y'all. Peace.